uh, it's important indeed the because of many reasons and each of them are so powerful that each of them would be enough to consider this a uh, very relevant and meaningful gathering uh, the first one is that uh, we're receiving the report of Dr. Javed Rechman uh, released on July 17th. I, as a former chair of the Committee Against Torture myself and, and uh, former president of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, I had the opportunity to see and participate in numerous reports. But this one stands out because of the seriousness, soulfulness, the legal grounds invoked, the veracity of its assertions, and really from the point of view of a contribution in general to uh, what it means su supervision, a, an attempt to achieve accountability, and the description of the situation that uh, is taking place in Iran and took place in uh, 1998 stands out as one, as I said before, of the top documents that have been uh, really uh, 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 composed and created by the by a rapporteur in the international community. My uh, sincere congratulations uh, to Dr. Rahman for this uh, very important report. Uh, Dr. Rechman have been a vehicle to tell this horror story of what happened uh, in Iran. And the content of this report is also what it stands out. Uh, it's difficult to think about a massacre of more than 30,000 people. Again, Iran has with this uh, one of the world records in terms of the extensity and atrocity committed in com the atrocities committed in 1988. One person's violation of human rights is enough uh, to ask for accountability, for reparations, to express solidarity of the victims. And when we witness the extent of the massacres and the killings that took place is simply something that defies our imagination. But it's not only a question of defiance, it's a call for action, for a need to struggle to achieve, among other things, accountability for this awful massacre that I said before stand out as one of the worst massacres committed by a by a, a government in the uh, 20th century i mentioned a third reason why this uh, is a very important report because it's a call for action it's a call for action because of the atrocities committed and because of the need for accountability and the need to uh, offer reparations full reparations to the victim including monetary damages, the moral suffering, the obligation of non-repetition, measures of satisfaction and accountability. That's what constitutes a, a holistic uh, reparation. And what, why that would be enough to justify the need for action? There is also another reason why a need for action is essential, namely the fact that when this type of atrocities do not result in action, in accountability, in telling the truth and reparation, they are simply announcing that more atrocities will follow. And this is what happened in Iran. The international community has witnessed the fact that hundreds of people opposing the, uh, the the current uh, situation in Iran, the the uh, have been exterminated abroad, for example, and we have seen again a lack of accountability, and 
again, we have witnesses, among others, uh, extensive repression, as it happened in 2022, where we witness in horror how peaceful demonstrations were brutally repressed. Uh, one of the key characteristics of the 21st century has been the struggle uh, against uh, discrimination uh, for for uh, uh, for any reason, including the discrimination against women, and the lack of accountability, the fact that atrocities atrocities can continue uh, to occur, has led, among other things to the fact that uh, women have been repressed for peacefully uh, demonstrating uh, for their rights. And numerous of them have been uh, killed as it is uh, publicly known by the international community. The fact that a lack of accountability and full reparation has taken place continues to exist as we are talking now. Uh, we have heard in horror that uh, uh, on uh, uh, the 7th of August of this year, 29 people were hanged. A record in terms of the killing in a single day by hanging of uh, uh, by, by a government uh, in the world. This is uh, something unacceptable and it constitutes an outright and direct violation of customary norms and treaties to which uh, Iran is compelled to uh, abide. I come from an hemisphere, the Western Hemisphere, where we have known repression and disappearances and torture. And myself, uh, 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 was exposed to that repression. Among other things, I could not return to my home country, Chile, for 13 years. And, uh, uh, and as a former also president of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, we have issued statements and, uh, and exposed and struggle for accountability in violations in the hemisphere. But we have witnessed also the value of action the value of international solidarity, the value of statements accompanying the victims. After the Second World War, the international community adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It was a very important document because it established something essential. It didn't matter your religion, your political uh, adherences, you are the color of your skin, your gender. What it mattered there and what the international community established there was that all of us had rights at the international level. The international community on the basis of the Universal Declaration continue to develop that promise of the Universal Declaration of human rights that created, as I said, this idea that all of us count, that all of us have rights that can be required and implemented at the international level. That opened the space for treaties, that opened the space for commissions, for courts, that opened the states for individual and collective liability, for example, in the form, uh, in the Statue of Rome, and in the fact that those commit international crimes cannot leave their own countries because they will be held accountable by the international community. It's still a work in progress, and we cannot ensure that the promise of the Universal Declaration has been fully implemented. But we have achieved something, the existence of a world conscience, the idea that this is not a matter only in this case, that of the suffering of people in Iran, the idea that what happens in Iran 
affect us all. And this is not only a question of the problems that are created by activities that constitute terrorism, but because of values, because we all adhere that this idea that human rights exist and that individuals are entitled to develop themselves to the limit of their potential. As I close my remarks, I want to extend my solidarity to the victims, to the survivors of the massacres of 1988, and reiterate the need for all of us to work together in order to achieve effective action so that we can live in a world and have the contribution in Iran as a free society. Thank you very much.